Hello and welcome to Dawn Chorus Writes, a miraculous ladybug fan fiction and audio fiction. This is a season one compilation of a birthday surprise. So I hope you enjoy it. Sit back and relax. A massive shout out and thank you to Jade Carroll for doing the commissioned artwork in the thumbnail. All that information is down below. So make sure you go and send her some love. Send me some love by smashing that like button comment down below what you think of it and subscribe because season two is coming out very soon so i hope you enjoy part one marinette's pov no i can't do it alia to spend the entire day with him marinette marched back and forth to her bedroom whilst her best friend sat on the chase Nino and I have to set up the party, which means you have to distract him for a day. And if we leave, Alia said plainly as she picked a chocolate chunk out of the cookies she was eating. Marinette paused. It would break his heart and think we didn't care about his birthday? Exactly! And his last two birthdays got akumatized, so he needs a treat this year. Marinette spun round and faced her friend with her eyebrows furrowed together, fiddling with her fingers. But what if he thinks it's a date and it freaks him out? Alia stood and rested her hands on Marinette's shoulders. But Mari, it's your chance to show Adrian what it would be like. And you have waited so long for a chance like this. I'm a fumbling mess around him. I can barely speak. Mari, I love you, but you need to get over this. He's your friend. You have known him for over three years now. There's nothing to fear. Mario planted her head into her hands. Does he know or is it a surprise? Well, I think Nino told him that we're doing movies, but I was thinking... Her head shot up out of her hands. What? You could come up with a plan to meet at breakfast and then an entire day. Alia, how am I meant to do that? Ali removed her hands from Marinette and took a step back, giving her the look she used when speaking to the point. Mari, do you want to be with Adrian? Yes, of course, but... No but! You've got to make this happen now or move on. Sorry, it's tough love. I get it. Oh, you're right. If I can't show how much Adrian means to me on his birthday, that's my girl. Alia patted her on the back as if she was a small child who had just realised that one plus one equals two. Marinette rolled her eyes. Oh, how was she going to pull this off? How on earth was she going to compose herself for ten minutes in front of Adrian? No matter an entire day. But her best friend was right. Oh. Of course she was right. This is her chance. It was now or never, but how? Marinette had spent most of the night trying to come up with a plan to get Adrian out of his confined house and away from his bodyguard. There had only been one clear winner and she would ask him at school today. Most of the morning was spent with Alia elbowing Marinette in the ribs so that she would speak to Adrian with the bruises to prove it. So when the bell rang out for lunch, Marinette took a deep breath. Adrian? Her voice barely escaped her mouth. Come on, you can do this. Adrian? He stopped placing the books inside his bag and turned to look at her. Yes, Marinette? He said with a wide smile and she felt herself blushing already. I was wondering, hoping, if it's not too much trouble, that is. I mean, I understand if you don't want to... How can I help, Marinette? His voice broke through and took a step closer, his hand hovering out, almost touching her arm before it dropped. Could you help me to speak to my uncle? She watched a quizzical look form on his face. Sorry, Uncle Wang Chang is Zoom calling me tomorrow morning and he struggles to understand and my mum would help, but she has a special order, so... You would like me to be there if I need to translate? I would pay for your breakfast, she added. I mean, yeah, if you could, I, I, I understand if... He rubbed the back of his neck, shifting glances between Marinette's gaze and the desk. I would love to, Marinette. After hospitality in Shanghai, and how could I turn down a Marinette breakfast on such a day? 
I mean, if you already have birthday plans, she lowered her gaze. Marinette, I said yes. I would love to come. What time is he calling at? His hands landed on hers, causing a whole body to come alive with electricity. He was holding a hand and had said, yes. Now what? Um, 9 a.m.? With the time difference before his restaurant opens? She was still in shock that he had said yes and hadn't realised that there were only two people left in the classroom. Great, and then we can head out to the movies afterwards and meet Ali and Nino? He grinned at her, not removing his hand from hers. That's the plan! She felt her cheeks burn, but she was doing it. She was holding a conversation with Adrian whilst he held her hand. She can do tomorrow, no problem. Everyone has left. He let out a light chuckle and released from the grip. Do you fancy getting some lunch? Oh, really? She was hoping to take a moment and compose her nerves, but I was planning to head home for lunch. His head dropped. But you're welcome to join me. Nothing fancy, but that sounds great. A double treat. I get your home-cooked food twice. Oh, okay. She placed the last book into a bag whilst flashes of a bedroom came to mind. Her pictures of him with hearts dotted around them and his half-finished birthday present she had been working on whilst coming up with a plan lay across the sewing table. She couldn't take him home. I'll just text my mum. Not if it's going to be a trouble. She saw the panic form across his face and it was her turn to reassure him. Without thinking, she placed a hand on top of his, resting on the bench catching his gaze and smiling. It's no problem. She removed her hand, sending out a text, not noticing the blush forming on his cheeks and the enormous smile that had appeared on his face. She sent a message asking her mom to pack her lunch to go, including an extra portion for a friend and maybe a hot chocolate. The bell rang out in the bakery as they slipped past the line of customers waiting patiently for their lunch. Hello, Papa! Marinette gave her father a wave. Is my mom around? Hello, sweetheart. Adrian, welcome back, my boy. Tom stepped forward and placed a flowery pat on Adrian's back. Hello, sir. Adrian mumbled, taken back by such a warm gesture. My boy, nothing so formal. Tom darted his focus back to the customer. Tom or Papa is fine. He threw a wink at Marinette, who instantly became flustered. My mom? Changing the subject. I'm here. Lovely to see you again, Adrian. Sabim gave him a wide smile, adding to Adrian's worn cheeks. I hope you don't mind, sweetheart, but I have packed your lunch to go. We are too busy here to stop, but I have made up two hot chocolates to keep you warm on your picnic. Sabine said softly, giving her daughter a knowing grin. Thank you, my mum. I'll see you after school. Thank you, Mrs. Dupan Chang. Adrian helped Marinette carry their food, turning to leave. Sabim is fine, dear. Have fun. Marinette took a deep breath of the chilly autumn air and feeling her fingers warm against the thermal cups, letting out a chocolatey steam. Shall we take this to the park? Marinette gestured to the park beside them. Yeah, a picnic. They sat in silence for a while as they nimbled on their delicious tarts. I love this time of year. Marinette blurted out, not knowing what to say. Watching the colours change on the leaves? Yeah, me too. When it's getting cold enough for that extra woolly layer. Marinette noted, Adrian pulling his thin jacket closer around his chest, wondering where his blue scarf was and why he didn't have a thicker jacket for this time of year. Then she knew how she could tweak his present to suit this autumn weather. Or the fact that nights are getting darker as you curl up whilst watching a film, drinking hot chocolate. She lifted the cup in her hands. Yeah. There was a sadness in his tone. Is everything alright? Is the food or drink okay? Marinette peered at him, leaning in a little closer. Oh, the food is great. Thank you. It's just, I've never had that. He dropped his gaze and avoided her eyes, fearing a pity look. I had what? The night you described? Curled up, cosy, watching a film whilst drinking a hot chocolate? I mean, if it tastes as good as this one. Really? 
She didn't mean to sound so surprised and instantly regretted it as a bashful look formed across his face. Then we'll have to plan one then. At mine? Just the two of us? His gaze darted up and caught hers. Was she or he asking out the other on a date or did she avoid and make it a group thing? Panic formed inside of her. What should she say? He shuffled closer to her. Because that would be nice. I mean, he rubbed his neck, if it was just the two of us. Uh, yeah, that would be nice. Unable to hold his gaze any longer, she darted her eyes down and ran her fingers along the top of her cup. Great, it's a date. At the sound of the words, her eyes shot up and saw a beaming smile on his face, promptly causing her cheeks to burn red. Oh, okay, yeah. Did she now have a date with Adrian? What did that mean? What kind of date? How did that happen? Was it a girlfriend date or a friend date? A million questions ran through her mind all at once. In the distance, they heard the warning bell sound out for class. Adrian pulled out his phone from his pocket. Wow, I didn't realise it was that time. We better hurry. Adrian stood up and held out his hand for her as she gathered up the paper rubbish to place in the recycle bins. Pushing the thought out of her head, she slipped her hand around his. The electricity she had felt earlier returned. As if he felt it too, he glanced at the hands and grinned. Students ambled past them, making their way to class, not noticing the two of them walking hand in hand. For the first time, she was glad Alia wasn't waiting for her on the steps, instantly making a big deal of what was happening. Nope. She would not freak out and question every tiny detail that was forming between Adrian and herself. Nope. She would not do that. Well, not until she was alone tonight and no one could hear her ramble and scream into a pillow. I need to place these into my locker and get my books. Marinette gestured to the stacked cups in her hand. He gave her hand a slight squeeze. I'll come with you. I need to grab something from my locker too. They parted as the hand slid out of their hold as Adrian stood in front of his and Marinette made her way over to hers. Carefully, she slid a piece of a cookie into a purse for Tiki, who was giving her a cheeky grin, knowing the conversation they would have tonight. She stared at her timetable and realised she and Adrian had different classes this afternoon. The bell rang out again. She was going to be late. I have maths this afternoon she said while shutting the locker. Yeah, I have advanced languages and then straight after I have a shoot so I won't see you. He looked nervous standing beside the locker. I'll see you in the morning? The words tumbled out of her mouth. Yeah, he smiled. I'll text you. Tonight? We had better... She realised he was unsure of what was happening between them as much as she was, which was a relief, to be honest, that she wasn't alone in this awkwardness. They walked together to the door, one was turning left whilst the other right. See you, she rolled her lip, not sure how to say bye now. Text you? He asked again. Yeah, text you. They slowly stepped away until they had no option to turn their backs on each other and dashed to class. Marinette shuffled into her seat beside Alia and pulled out a textbook, giving her teacher a sorry smile who had noticed the addition of another student. So? Alia elbowed Marinette in the same spot on the ribs. Did you ask him? Stop that! And yes, I did. He's coming round in the morning for breakfast. Marinette avoided the stare she knew her friend was throwing at her. What? Really? How did you manage that? Alia said in a low voice as the teacher instructed the class on the task needed to be completed before the end of lesson. I said I needed his help with my uncle on a Zoom call. Marinette scrunched up her face. You lied to get Adrian round? Marinette Dupine Tang. I would never have believed. I know, but... I thought it was the only reason that would work and that his father would allow having an excuse for him to practice his Mandarin. Wow, I'm impressed. Truly, I am. No, I should tell him the truth, shouldn't I? That's up to you. Do you think he'll still come round if you do? 
She would like to think he would, especially since they had sort of arranged a date night and held hands, but it was still vague enough that he could take it back. I don't know. She pursed her lips together. At the moment her phone buzzed in her pocket, it was a message from Adrian. Adrian. Hey, I was thinking I could ask Natalie if I could come round at 8am, if it's not too early. Kiss. Who's texting you? Is that Adrian? 8am, that's keen. And double kisses? Alia? Marinette's fingers hovered over the letters, not sure what she should say to either her friend or Adrian. Marinette. Hey, ATM is good with me. I was wondering if you would prefer pancakes or waffle for your breakfast. I'm stopping by the store on my way home. Kiss. Marinette drummed her fingers against the desk, waiting for a reply. The three lines appeared and then disappeared. He's in class. What is she doing? He might not reply until... The phone buzzed. Adrian. I've never had waffles before. Could I ask for blueberry ones since it's my special breakfast? Is he flirting with you? Ilya leaned over, invading Marinette's personal space, and read the message. No, of course not. Was Alia right? Was he flirting with her? No. Could he be on top of the hand-holding? What was happening? Adrian. If I didn't have the photo shoot, I would come with you. Marinette. Blueberry waffles it is, and I understand. Are you not flirting back? Alia, seriously, move back. Marinette moved her friend back over, trying not to gain the attention from the teacher. He's not flirting with me. What would I say anyway? Marinette finally glanced at Alia, who was giving her a knowing look, and raised an eyebrow at her. You could add, if it means keeping this commitment so we could spend your whole birthday together, I'm okay with that. I can't send that. Pass it here then, I'll do it. Before Marinette had a chance to swerve out the way, Alia grabbed the mobile and finished typing out the message and then ended it with double kisses. Alia, not cool. There was no way she could tell a friend now with what happened at lunch. If she acted this way over a text message, what would she do if she learned Marinette had a potential date with Adrian in the works and they had held hands walking back to school? She didn't want to scare Adrian off before she had the possibility of discovering what was happening between them. She waited to see if he would reply. Seconds felt like minutes and minutes felt like hours. She focused on the problem they needed to solve on the board at the front of the class when her mobile buzzed again. Adrian. Thank you, Marinette. You're so thoughtful, and you've made me excited about my birthday for the first time in a long while. What film should we see? Double kiss. He ended it with two kisses again? Only because you put it there? He doesn't want to sound rude. How about calling you thoughtful and making him excited about his birthday? You can't deny it. Adrian is flirting with you, girl. Alia, please, I'm nervous as it is. If I think there is that possibility, then tomorrow I will be a mess. Putting that extra pressure on myself? Okay, you're right. I'll zip it. For now. She threw a wink at Marinette and then returned her attention back to her work. She was grateful to her bestie, sensing how hard she was finding it not to add just one more comment. Marinette, I think that's up to the birthday boy to choose, but I hear there's a new anime out. Kiss. Adrian. Do you mean A Whiskers Away? I've been wanting to watch that. It sounds perfect to me. Kiss. Marinette. LOL. That could be plausible to me. Winky face. Kiss. And they spent most of the afternoon into the night texting each other back and forth, talking in a way that they'd never done before. In the past, their messaging each other would be as awkward as their speaking one, never sure of what to say unless in a group chat. But today, last night, Marinette was able to discover new information about the boy she loved and if she could keep this light-hearted conversation going in person then perhaps his birthday won't be so much of a mess. She can do this. At midnight, she sent one last message. 
Marinette. A happy birthday, Adrian. I will see you at 8 a.m. for blueberry waffles. Good night and sweet dreams. Three kisses. Adrian. Thank you, Marinette. I can't wait. I know I'll have the sweetest of dreams. You've already made my birthday special. Good night. Three kisses. Marinette hugged her phone and let out a little squeal. Could it be possible that Adrian might like her? Marinette, I'm happy for you, but it's time for sleep now. Tiki flew up and hugged Marinette's cheek. You're right, Tiki. I can't look tired tomorrow. Let me place on a bow and his present will be done. Marinette grabbed a green ribbon to match his eyes and wrapped it around the box, praying he would love it. She got herself ready for bed, climbing under the covers when her phone burst beside her. Adrian. I know we planned a cosy night watching a film as our first date, but I was wondering if we could class tomorrow as our first date. Will you be my date for my birthday? Three kisses. Marinette stared at her phone, pausing over the letters on how to reply. So they had planned for an actual date night, but now he wants to make his birthday a date? No pressure. Now tomorrow has to go perfectly. Wait, he wants me to be his birthday date? Me. A date with Adrian making blueberry waffles followed by an entire day together? Oh, tomorrow is going to be the best day ever. Marinette. I would love to. We could have the cosy night as our second date. Three kisses. She held her breath at being so bold. It felt strange and good, allowing a bit of ladybug confidence out. She was officially going on a date with Adrian tomorrow. Part 2. Marinette's POV. Adrian. In that case, could we plan the cosy night for Sunday? A perfect way to finish a birthday weekend with you. If you don't have... Already plans, that is. Three kisses. Marinette's eyes widened at her screen and for a split second had stopped breathing. He wants to spend an entire weekend with her? He's asking for a second date before he even knows he'll enjoy the first? Then the thought flashed into her mind. She was starting it with a lie. What would he think when he turned up in the morning and uncle didn't call? No, she couldn't start this relationship them dating with a lie if it meant it stopping before it began she took a deep breath she had taken a while to process her thoughts perhaps he had fallen asleep oh okay just do it marinette i would love that we could make a pillow fort and watch some films ideal for a sunday but adrian i have a confession would this be better if she said it to his face, but that would be after he arrived and at least this way he could choose not to come? By accident she pressed send. Oh no. Adrian. What's wrong? You know you can tell me anything, Marinette. Three kisses. Marinette. I wanted to invite you around for breakfast, but I didn't think you'd want to come if I asked for me, so I lied. I said my uncle was calling. I thought your father would allow you to come to practice your Mandarin, but he's not calling. I'm really sorry I lied earlier, and I don't want you to feel you have to come if you don't want to. I would love you to come for breakfast, blueberry waffles, but I understand if you don't want to now. Three kisses. She quickly pressed send and noticed she had rambled like she did to his face. Oh, there was no way he would agree to that. One thing Adrian hated was liars. Well, she had been on a sort of date with Adrian for a few hours. Oh, please say something. Adrian, I'm sorry that you thought that I wouldn't want to come if you asked me, but I think a part of me kind of knew about your uncle in some sort of way, as he had a good understanding of English in Shanghai. I would love to still spend my birthday with you, starting with blueberry waffles and ending on Sunday evening in a pillow fort. I really like you, Marinette, and I hope you feel that you can tell me. Ask me anything from now on. Three kisses. 
Marinette let out an enormous sigh, feeling she could breathe again. He had forgiven her. He still wanted to date her. He really liked her? Happy tears filled her eyes as she gripped tight onto the phone and let out a controlled squeal not to wake Tiki, who had finally gone to sleep. What should she say? I love you? I really like you? Yeah, you didn't want to scare him off before. Oh, love might be too big of a word for now, especially over text. No, love was a word you said to the face. One day. Marinette, thank you for your understanding. You're really kind and thoughtful. I can't wait. To be honest, not sure how I'm going to sleep. And Adrian, I really like you too. Three kisses. Her blushing cheeks hurt with the grin that was now constantly glued to her face. How is this possible? She had told him, well, kind of, how she felt after years of going back and forth. It was now after 1am and he would be here in just over six hours. How, oh, how was she meant to sleep? Adrian, can't wait to see you in a few hours, but I better try and get some sleep. The sweetest of dreams, Marinette. Three kisses. Marinette. You too, Adrian. Three kisses. She turned round and placed her phone onto a charge and triple checked her alarm to go off every ten minutes starting at 6am so she had time to make sure everything was perfect. Marinette! Wake up! Tiki shouted next to Marinette's ear, waking her with a start from a dream she had been having, a magical date with Adrian. Tiki, what is it, an Akuma? No, you slept through your alarms. I've been shouting at you for the past ten minutes. Adrian will be here at any moment. Oh, no, no, blast, maybe he'll be late. She scrunched up her face, not believing it herself. She grabbed her phone. It was 7.30? She had 30 minutes to get ready and set up the kitchen. She noticed a message from him, and the conversation she had last night flooded her thoughts and brought a smile to her face that would outshine a summer's day. Adrian. Morning. I hope you slept well. I'm going to be leaving soon. Do you need me to bring anything? Three kisses. He had sent it 20 minutes ago. Oh, blast! What if he thought she had regretted it or slept in like she had, or the magic had disappeared between them? Marinette. Morning, birthday boy. Nope, got everything sorted. Only need you. Three kisses. Oh no, was that too bold? Okay, time to focus. Need to get ready. She gave her phone one last stare, waiting to see if he texts back. No, focus and check back soon. Last night, during the messaging, she had designed a little birthday banner for him and searched out some remaining balloons she had left over. Time to decorate. Her parents were downstairs in the bakery for the morning deliveries. Tiki, would you mind getting the space ready for Adrian whilst you get ready? Yes. It will cost you, Marinette, one jar. A jar of cookies? That's a lot of cookies, Tiki, but it's a deal. Thank you. Marinette gave her little friend a tickle before darting around the room, grabbing a towel and her clothes. As she made her way down the stairs, she noticed the space was already decorated. I was careful, no one saw, but when I can wake you. Thank you, Tiki. You are amazing, you know that. I'm proud of you, Marinette, for being bold today, no matter what. They beamed at each other as Marinette quickly ran into the bathroom. She felt giddy, every inch of her was twitching with excitement. She picked out a special coconut and sheer butter shampoo and felt her nerves growing butterfly wings in her stomach. She placed on a simple pink A-line dress that would go with her usual jacket and rubbed the towel against her damp hair as the door knocked. Oh no, he was here? She wasn't ready. She glanced around the kitchen. Tiki had done a great job. She might have to pay her in two jars of cookies. She jiggled on the spot, taking a deep breath as another knock sounded out. She glanced behind her, making sure Tiki was hidden. She had managed a little makeup, but her hair was down and damp. She would just need to make time before they headed out. Okay, deep breath. She felt like she was going to be sick with the amount of nerves filling her gut. She opened the door and there he was. 
smiling at her with a light blush on his cheeks. Hey! Hey! Morning, I mean, birthday morning? No, stop blustering over your words. I can do this. Come in. She took a step to the side, opening up the doorway for him to slide past her. He stopped in front of her. The blush in his cheeks was growing darker and felt hers doing the same. You look beautiful, Marinette. Thanks. You too. I mean, handsome. Okay, what do they do now? Shake hands? Kiss cheek? Hug? Lips? The awkward moment was overtaken as Adrian noticed the banner and balloons decorating the space with all the ingredients for the waffles laid out and his present with a green bow standing out. He took a step forward in silence, his head shifting from one element to another. Wow! Marinette! Happy birthday! You like it? It's not... It's amazing! Perfect! Thank you! Without warning, he turned around and flung his arms around her and squeezed her tight. I love it! He breathed into her ear. She mirrored his tightness, her right hand brushing down his back in a soothing manner. No one has ever... He withdrew from the hug slightly, and she could tell there was a shadow hanging over his day, overcasting his sunshine. Marinette knew in that moment this special boy who meant the world to her would get the birthday he had always dreamt of. No holding back. She leaned in and kissed him lightly on the cheek, taking him by surprise. I'm glad you like it. Shall we make some breakfast? She retracted out of his embrace and gestured for him to step into the kitchen. And coffee, please. For some reason, I didn't get much sleep last night. He rubbed the back of his neck and gave her a smirk. Oh, what did she say to that? Why was it so much easier to type out a message instead of saying it to his face? Come on, be bold. I really enjoyed talking to you last night. She glanced sideways at his face. Yeah, me too. It was his turn to feel awkward. Marinette let out a chuckle, breaking the tension. <laughs> Shall we? Birthday waffles and a large coffee coming up. She popped a blueberry from the bowl into her mouth and then automatically offered them to Adrian to try, noticing his inner sunshine was glowing. Oh, they're good. So what would you like me to do, chef? Marinette got Adrian to measure out the correct amount as she mixed the ingredients together and felt everything relax in between them. She placed on a Taylor Swift playlist on random, bopping up and down to the beats as each track played. They worked well together, stealing glances at each other, their hands brushing against each other, but never lingering. Marinette pressed down the waffle maker. There. It should take about five minutes, and then I think we'll have the best blueberry waffles. Do you want extra fruit on them, or yogurt, or cream? No, what about maple syrup? She stopped talking when his hand rested on top of hers as she clung onto the fridge door, encouraging her fingers to rest into the palm of his hand instead. If we have five minutes, will you dance with me, Marinette? He held out a hand as one track drifted onto another. Really? Here? Marinette twirled a strand of hair around her finger, darting her gaze across the room, unable to keep it on him. Why not? If you want to, that is. He began retracting his hand when she suddenly placed hers in his, as she rolled her bottom lip whilst producing a smile that reached her eyes. I'd love to. This is all... I didn't think, Adrian, you... Words fumbled out of her mouth. Come on! He pulled her closer, wrapping his arms around her waist as he leaned his head in against hers. Was he dreaming? Was she dancing with Adrian in a kitchen at 9am whilst making blueberry waffles? I've been hoping for a chance since New York, but it never seemed to work out, so sometimes you just have to... The lyrics filtered between them. Because I see sparks fly whenever you smile. Get me with those green eyes, baby, as the lights go down. Give me something that will haunt me when you're not around. Because I see sparks fly when you smile. They rocked back and forth on the balls of their feet, his head slowly wandering out of her neck, cheeks brushing against each other. Her stomach dropped as the cheeky timer went off, 
and the spell was broken. Waffles are ready! The hands dropped as she took a step back. They smell amazing. You've done a great job, Marinette. Adrian stood next to her, holding out a plate to place them on. You mean we did a great job? It was teamwork. She grinned at him, noticing a thought drifting across his face for a brief second. And then he was back in the room. Do you want to put them on the table with the toppings and I'll put another two on? She ladled in the mixture and then reset the cheeky timer. Sure. Thank you for doing all this, Marinette, for my birthday and our first date. It feels pretty special already. Wait! I forgot! Your present! I can't believe! She spun around and took a gigantic step to the side, grabbing the parcel, almost losing her balance, and then turned in the space of a few steps, making it look like a strange dance. Happy birthday, Adrian! Again! She kept her head low and stole glances at his expression through her lashes, darting her gaze upwards. You didn't have to, Marinette. This, he gestured to the food and decorations, would have been more than enough. His eyes locked onto hers for a split second, causing him to lose his train of thought. I started to make your present a while ago, before this, so it's nothing. Open it, please. She watched him bump the green ribbon between his thumb and forefinger before pulling it free. Please, like, oh, please. She twisted the paper napkin into one long strip to stop her hands from jumping around. He lifted the lid off the box and his eyes widened as his mouth remained in an open position. You can be honest with me. If you don't like it, that would be... Marinette. His hand landed firmly on hers amongst the destroyed napkins. This is... Words don't... I love... He glanced at the hands, fingers rubbing side by side, smiling and giving her a tight squeeze before taking it back to hold the gift up. You made this for me? Gravity helped to unfold the black leather jacket out in front of them. I know you're a fan of Ladybug and Cat Noir, so I added little details into the stitching. The zip and the little hidden elements. She pointed to each aspect, the tiny ladybugs she had hand-stitched that were hidden across the jacket. This must have taken not that long. I got the idea about two months back at the start of term, but I added in the fleecy liner last night when I noticed how cold you seemed at lunch. Her focus darted around the room, unable to hold his stare any longer. She failed to notice Adrian leaning towards her until his hands cupped her face, forcing her attention to land on him. Her breathing slowed, but her heart raced, hammering out the remaining breath. He tilted his head to the side. Was he going to kiss her? At the last moment, he shifted to the side as his lips landed on her beetroot cheek. Lingering there, he edged closer. They both jumped when the cheeky timer went off again. Blast that thing! His hand dropped as she climbed to her feet. The kitchen filled with the scent of vanilla, jammy blueberries and sugar as she lifted the lid to the second batch. Without needing to ask, he held out the plate with the first two and still untouched. We had better eat before these get cold. He sat back down, rubbing the back of his neck. Marinette, he said flustered. You're special. I mean, today is special. I mean, to say... She took a deep breath. You mean a lot to me, Adrian, and I'm glad. She took a seat next to him at the table. What would you like to do after breakfast? She placed one waffle on his plate and the other on hers. I have some ideas if you... Yeah, that would be good. What were you thinking? She picked up the fruit first, followed by the squater cream and then the maple syrup, offering them over to Adrian. There is a seasonal maker's market down by the Seine today, including food stalls where we could grab a coffee or a hot chocolate, and then there is a showing of Whiskers Away at 1pm. We have to be somewhere at 4pm, but there is plenty of time. That all seems perfect to me, Marinette, he blushed, and then gave her a light smile as she giggled at the gesture, edging closer. Where do we need to be at 4 you're such a dog, and it's a surprise, okay? Somehow his cat pun brought out a hint of Ladybug as she went to push him back in a flirtatious manner. 
whatever you say, Marinette. And these waffles are as good as I thought they would be. He moved his attention back to the food. They spent the rest of the breakfast and the clean-up afterwards, chatting back and forth, talking about sewing or manga or anything that popped into their minds. Before it was time to leave, Adrian lifted the leather jacket out of the box and slipped it on. Its tailored form fitted him exactly as he did a little spin in front of Marinette's mirror, admiring all the details and doing a couple of model poses. He let out a light laugh. I I keep forgetting I have a model Adrian in my room instead of my classmate Adrian. My... She didn't know how to finish it. Was he still a friend, a date, or a potential boyfriend? We had better head off. She placed her shoulder bag on, taking a quick peek inside, checking for Tiki, who was already fast asleep. She went to place her hair into her usual pigtails when he stopped her, holding a hand out for hers. You look stunning with your hair down. Not that you don't with it up, it's just nice to see this different side too. She placed the bubbles into her bag and slipped her hand into his. The electricity she had felt yesterday lunchtime had returned, forming a broad grin on both their faces. Shall we? They made their way down the stairs and out the back door into the crisp autumn day. The weak sunshine dappled through the remaining golden and red leaves on the trees as their feet picked up the carefully placed heaps of fallen ones arranged around the sidewalk. He squeezed a hand as they skipped down the path, not paying anyone notice. This was their city, cutting down the side streets, ambling past the tourists taking pictures and glancing up at the rooftops, hoping to spy a glimpse of Ladybug and Cat Noir. Not today. She crossed her fingers. After another five or ten minutes walking, they saw the large wheel that mimicked the look of the fairground ride out in front of them, and the rows of stalls covered in a range of goods, from handcraft foods to hats to scarves, bags, jewellery, and a few artists. Thank you for bringing me here, Marinette. It's a part of Paris I don't get to see. If it's not a photo shoot, school or classes, then I seem to miss out on these elements. Well, she tried on an oversized hat. Well, she tried on an oversized hat, doing a model pose, making Adrian laugh. My birthday promise to you is to make sure you don't miss out again. Either trips like these or curled up watching a film with a hot chocolate or anything else. Without saying a word, she became lost in his green eyes that displayed a hint of pain, like they had done the day before and wondered what his life was like when she wasn't around and wanted so much to protect him from that feeling again. Marinette, for the first time in a long while, you make me feel lucky that I get to spend my birthday with you, someone who is sweet and kind and I really like, who I'm starting to fall for. His hand brushed her cheek before gliding down onto her shoulder, pulling her in closer, unaware of the people passing them by as they hid their faces under the broad rim of the hat, sharing the first kiss. Part 3. Marinette's POV Marinette pulled back, knowing her cheeks were on fire. Adrian, composing himself, turned to the stall holder with a few notes in his hand. We'll take the hat! causing her to let out a girly giggle and glance at his face that too had an equally broad smile blend in with the pink cheeks. Thank you. For the hat. Adrian turned back around, placing the change in his pocket, and took hold of Marinette's hand, brushing his thumb against hers, guiding her towards another stall. My pleasure. Think of it like an umbrella we can hide under when I kiss you again. His gaze darted towards her smiling eyes. Adrian? She gestured him to the side, away from the rows of people filtering across from one booth to another. Her heart was pounding in her chest. It was different to the usual flutter. This time it was more hammering against the sides, trying to break free. She was about to confess her true feelings to Adrian. Yes, she had said she liked him over a text message, but this was to his face. But he had said he was falling for her, hadn't he? Could she do this? It was now or never moment. Lay your cards on the table, bite the bullet. Actually, she was totally sure what that reference. Never mind, focus. Yes, Marinette? He gave her hand a light squeeze, bringing her attention back to him. Adrian. 
She turned her gaze away from the river and back onto his face, which was smiling, but he also had a hint of fear in his eyes. With a free hand, she ran her fingers across the black leather jacket she had made for him and patted her forefinger on one of the tiny ladybugs for good luck. I like you. No. No? His hand reached round her waist, pulling her in closer. Oh, she had already kissed him. He said his feelings. Why on earth was this hard? Why did she suddenly feel fragile that if he should drop her, she would fracture into tiny shards? It's more. He encouraged her in closer against him. Oh, she couldn't breathe. Her gaze fixed on her hand on his jacket. Come on. Look up, Marinette. Say it to his face. It will be fine. You can do this. His soft apricot lips, his button nose, and at last landing on his sparkling green eyes. Adrian, I love you with all my... His lips engulfed her words with a slow, tender kiss. Her head was spinning. She pulled back, taking a deep breath. A heart! She blurted out, causing him to chuckle. You mean it? You're not just saying it. I've loved you for years. I just didn't think. I thought you... Really? Years? I thought you with... Oh, I wish I had, Marinette. Yes? I love you too. He let the words float between them, seeping into her mind, which was now officially struggling to process the information. Oh, and one more thing. She let out a squeak in response. Will you be my girlfriend? You! Adrian! Love me? And wanna be my boyfriend? Was she dreaming? One of those fever dreams that seemed so real. She hadn't felt sick. Oh, please don't say this was all a dream. Yes, he let out a light laugh. Yes to all of it. Will you and make my birthday wish come true? And you said you loved me too. He gave her a cheeky grin she had never seen him do before. She liked this side of him. Yes. Good. He gave her another quick kiss, as if sealing the deal, or binding. Now, I think I have spotted some food souls ahead. Tea or hot chocolate? I might go for coffee, he gave her a wink. Where had this newfound confidence come from? She wished it spread to her and stopped her buffering mind that was struggling to process the information. So, what's it going to be? Hot chocolate, please? Maybe sugar will help to kickstart her brain. Hello, can I get a grande pumpkin spice coffee and a grande deluxe fudge hot chocolate, please? Thank you, Marinette whispered as her eyes widened at the marshmallows and whipped cream added to the top. If this wasn't going to do the job, she didn't know what would. Did you get pumpkin spice? Yeah, I keep seeing it mentioned on the American shows and wanted to give it a go. The conversation was slowly returning to how it was before. No, in fact, it was better. She could make little gestures and not overthink it. They now knew where they stood with each other. Apart from one little thing, she carefully opened her side bag and slipped in the free token cookie before clipping it shut again. Where else would you like to go? I saw a cheese stand over there. Would you mind? I get it delivered. He tilted his head to the side and gave her a smile no one could say no to. Then he took a sip of his coffee and nodded his head. Actually, this is nice. I can see why it's a favour of theirs. Sure, lead the way. She took a mouthful of the cream off the top of her drink and saw a blush forming on his cheeks before he leant forward and brushed his thumb across the front of her nose. Whoops, she giggled. They spent another hour wandering from one stall to another as a phone buzzed in her pocket. Alia, how's it going with Adrian? Still holding it together? Preparations is going well. Make an excuse to bring him to my flat at 4pm, okay? She would not tell her best friend over the phone all the details. She would end up flipping out and get distracted. She would tell her at the party. Marinette, 
all good here. That should be fine. See you then. Alia. I want details later. How? How could she tell from that? Was there nothing she could hide from her best friend? Marinette let out a chuckle, grabbing Adrian's attention. Oh, blast. What's so funny? He turned his focus away from some artistic jewellery he was studying and back at her. Oh, nothing. Just something Alia had just messaged about. But they said they can't do the cinema and meet afterwards. But we could still go, if you want to, that is. A date at the movie with my girl, where we can warm up from the chill? I can't think of anything better. Adrian slipped his hand around her waist and gave her a peck on the cheek. She had curled up in his arms like she had seen other couples do countless of times at the cinema and always wondered what it would be like. It was so much better than she had imagined. They had joked about the last time they had attended the cinema together, him in his helmet and her in her goggles, towel head and pyjamas. I had loved that day, dashing around Paris with you, and then how you looked all cute like that in your disguise. I think that's when my feelings changed. Adrian let out a soft chuckle, scooping her in a little closer. I loved that day too. The two of us? She sighed happily as he kissed the top of her head whilst his fastening heartbeat echoed that of hers. The film had been sweet, as the girl wore a mask to become a kitty and add comfort to the boy she loved, whilst battling her own demons at home. For some reason, it reminded her of her own kitty, Cat. Even though his attention had shifted away from her of late, she wondered how he would take the news that she was now dating someone else. On the next patrol, she would find some way to tell him, but also give a gesture of friendship. That nothing would change between the two of them. Lost in her thoughts, she hadn't noticed at first Adrian getting emotional towards the film until she heard his sniffles. He was a sensitive soul, wasn't he? She pulled him in a tighter and felt him rest his head on hers. What was in the film that was making him so sad and on his birthday too? Hey, you okay? She whispered up at him. Yeah, I'm good. He interweaved his fingers around hers. Anime has this effect on me sometimes. He removed his hand from around her shoulder and snuggled his sleeve against his eyes, ridding himself of the evidence before planting a smile on his face she didn't quite believe. The film finished and they had 30 minutes until they were due at Alia's. Is there anything you would like to do? We have a little time before Ali and Nino can meet us, Marinette said, noticing Adrian was still a little distracted. Or we can just walk. Walking is good. Park or river. He took her hand without hesitation now. How had it already become second nature to them in the space of a few hours? Park, you have the change of colours of the season, but the river is romantic. Yeah. It's settled then. River it is. They walked a few blocks in silence, only communicating with each other through taps and gentle strokes of their fingers against the others. Random strangers ambled past them, keeping their heads down against the sudden chill from the drop in temperature. Marinette let out an involuntary shudder as a sharp breeze cut through her. Are you cold? Would you like my jacket? No, silly. He glanced at her sideways. Then you would be cold. I'll be fine. Why don't we take a seat then? I hear body heat is the best way to combat the cold. He raised his eyebrows at her. Is that so? And here's me thinking that was for hypothermia. Well, I didn't want to say, but you are turning a little blue, Marinette. He tapped on the seat beside him. In that case, she lowered herself down. Marinette was all too aware that they tried to act confidently in front of each other, but there was still this newness about letting her guard down. The side of herself she only allowed herself to show in front of Alia and Kat. Now she needed to add Adrian into that list, after years of being a fumbling mess around him. That should be easy, right? I wanted to say thank you. This has been the best time and the most amazing birthday. It's not over yet. Which is great, but even if it ended now, it would be how you have made it a birthday surprise. I'm glad. You mean the world to me, Adrian. 
he was her turn to lean in a little closer, taking a steady breath and was about to... When her alarm went off, they were going to be late. Part 4. Adrian's POV. Marinette paused before pulling away a little. I think it's time to go, birthday boy. She gave him a little wink. Are you really not telling me what is happening? I don't need any fuss, mate. I would be quite happy to remain here with you. He was reluctant to move his hand away from around her waist. I feel the same way. She bopped him on the nose as she leaned in, about to kiss it, but stopped. But your friends want to, so let them, okay? She gave him a look he knew well. Another two ticks in his confirmation. But she couldn't be, could she? He wasn't that lucky after all. He was the black cat. He smiled and kissed her on the cheek. Okay. Plus, if you are still wanting to come round tomorrow for hot chocolate, pillow fort and cuddles? She felt herself blush at being so bold, pushing a loose strand of hair behind her ear. Of course I do. Our second date and being with my girlfriend, I wouldn't miss it for the world. He tightened his grip around her waist, wanting to pull her in a fraction, but knew they had better make tracks, guessing it would be a party they had organised, knowing his girlfriends. Good. That's good, because I was thinking what films we could watch. Do you fancy another anime, or action, adventure, or romance? Climbing to his feet, he held out a hand for her to hold. What would you like to watch? How about... About for romance, you've got mail, or we could go West Anderson and Fantastic Mr. Fox. I love his imagery. Both give me the autumn feels. She swung her hand out between them as she did a little skip it into a step, matching that of his heart. Today was the happiest he'd ever been, and it no longer mattered to him if it was his birthday. Spending the day alone with Marinette. Admitting his feelings to her that had been building up for a while and, oh, don't get him started on the kiss he had found himself still repeating in his head, wanting so much to do it again. And yet, there was still this nervousness between them, of the bubbling sensation in his stomach before he reached out and touched her, overthinking each move. Like right now, he had the desire to wrap his arm around her shoulder as they walked so that he could feel constantly connected to her. But if he dropped her hand to make a move, would she think that he was pulling away from her? How could he transition the move smoothly? Why was he being like this? If he was in his cat noir suit, he wouldn't think twice. But no, Adrian wasn't as cool as his counter self. He caught her shivering. He caught her shivering again and couldn't help but smile. This was his chance. Channeling a bit of cat, he muttered, come here. He pulled her hand closer to his side and then without second thinking it, slipped it out of hers, running it over his shoulders and landing on the other side. She leaned in, sighed happily as she rested her head on his shoulder as their feet became in sync. Angling his head down, he kissed the top of her head, feeling himself relax once more. They rounded the corner and recognised where they were. Are we going to Alia's place? Yes, they need, I need to oh you'll see she let out a flustered giggle into his shoulder muffling the sound he couldn't help but join in with her laughter she paused in step taking him by surprise what do we tell everyone about what he angled himself in front of her as she kept her gaze down at the shoes us i mean do we say tell them that we are dating or we don't have to, I mean, if... Marinette. And it's still early, so I understand. She pointed her fingers together, something she did when she was nervous, he noticed. Marinette, I love you. Of course I want to tell everyone that we are dating. Why wouldn't I, unless you... No, I want to, for a while, in fact, but... What's the problem? He placed his hand on her cheek sliding it underneath her chin, lifting it up so he could finally stare into her ocean eyes. I mean, I will shout it from the balcony if you want me to. 
He gave her a cheeky grin and held it until her anxiety gave way to a smile, followed by a light laugh. That's better. I'm proud to say that Marinette Dupan Chang is my girlfriend because I think you are the most amazing person in the world, whom I love with all my heart, and I really want to kiss. He took in a sharp intake of breath as she gazed at him through her lashes, whilst her hand drifted across his neck and rested behind his head. She arched up on her tippy toes, brushing her lips against his. Oh, wow. His heart was suddenly too enormous to be contained inside his chest and was bursting forth. They broke apart. Breathing was scarce and he knew his face would be flushed with colours of the season and yet a grin was plastered on his face that reached from one ear to another. Oh, he could kiss this girl every minute of the day for the rest of his life and never tire of it. I love you too, Adrian, and more than proud to say that you are my boyfriend. I just can't quite believe it. Yeah, me too. But in a good way, you know? Yeah, in a really good way. She rolled her bottom lip between her teeth and did that look with the lashes again, knowing his cheeks had got that little bit darker. Shall we? She gestured with her head towards the door to the apartment building. They will wonder where we are, plus we have tomorrow to keep doing this. She gave him one last cheeky smile before removing his hand from her waist and securing it in hers. Okay, she seriously needed to stop being this cute, adorable, and teasing him with the idea of being... No, it wasn't possible, was it? His lady? Lost in his thoughts, he let her lead him towards the door and hearing Alia shout out, Come in! through the buzzer. As they stood aside Alia's flat door, Adrian caught Marinette before she knocked. Don't let go, okay? She replied with a bashful smile and gave him a smile. She replied with a bashful smile and gave him a small nod as she tapped her knuckles against the door. He intertwined his fingers around hers as the door burst open. Happy birthday, sunshine boy! Alia smiled, gestured for them to come in, noticing how they were interlocked and transformed the smile to a smirk. Had a good day so far, have we? Her gaze shifted from Adrian and landing on Marinette, who he could feel was squirming already. He gave her fingers a light squeeze to reassure her as he stepped forward. At the end of the hallway, long golden streams created a curtain which blocked out the living room. The hesitation gave way to excitement, seeing how much effort his friends had put into this already. With Marinette at his side, this was going to be fun. He stepped through first, followed by Marinette, as an explosion of sound erupted around them, declaring, Happy birthday, Adrian! As his entire class stood before him underneath a handmade banner, balloons and a rainbow of colour from streamers darted from one corner to another. As if the crowd had counted down to three, they all pounced on Adrian at once, engulfing him in hugs and breaking the link between him and Marinette. As her fingers tore away, his heart dropped as the hand felt empty. He glanced over at her, angling his vision around the bobbing heads in front of him, and found her giggling at the vision before her. Thanks, guys, for this, he tried to shout out over the noise. Okay, shall we let Sunshine Boy breathe and get this party started? Alia flung her arms into the air. Nino's cue to start the music, and the crowd either took to the makeshift dance floor, in the centre of the room, or to the outer edges. Hey! Adrian moved back to Marinette, who was now talking to Luca. Part of him had been jealous of how much more at ease she was around Luca instead of himself. In class, he had overheard her confirm to Alia that she and Luca were only friends, and yet he knew Luca had wanted more, but she had chosen him, right? She had chosen Adrian, even said she loved him. So why did he suddenly feel, no, that was silly, right? Hey, you. That was a welcome. She chuckled, giving him a warm smile, her fingers fidgeting with a stray piece of thread from her sleeve. 
He wanted to so much to take her hand back or slide his around her waist, but that would be too bold. Would it look like he was claiming her to Luca? Not sure how his friend would respond. Happy birthday, man. Have you had a good day so far? Inquired Luca. Yeah, I have. It's been amazing. Adrian glanced at Marinette, who was now blushing with a sheepish smile across her face, causing him to let out a light laugh. It's been the best day I could ever ask for. Spending it with Marinette, he said, knowing a large smile was forming across his face that he couldn't and didn't want to hide. Like he had told her, he was proud to say that she was his girlfriend, and that's why he... Surprised by Marinette, giving him a playful nudge, he shifted his attention onto her, and with no other motive other than to feel connected to her, Adrian wrapped his arm around her waist and drew her in close. So, you two are together then? It's official? Luca darted his gaze from Adrian, his hand, and landing on Marinette. What's this? I used to, you know. Alia blurted in as she almost dived into the group. Yes, Marinette and Adrian said as one. What? Boyfriend and girlfriend? It's official. Used to are officially a couple? Alia wiggled her fingers back and forth between the pair as if pointing out all the details to the entire room. Yes, Alia, we are, Marinette said, looking from her best friend to Luca, who was shifting on the spot and back to Adrian, who was stroking his thumb in a reassuring manner in the dip of her waist. Girl! Alia's fingers finally landed in front of her face and then quickly darted back and forth to Marinette. Later! Marinette confirmed with a nod and a flustered giggle. Shall we get something to drink? Adrian whispered into Marinette's ear, as his hand slid back across and found its home in hers once more. She guided him to the open kitchen part of the living space, searching the counter for the drinks and snacks. I think we have a tropical drink, Grenadine. Coke, lemonade? Oh, my folks must have dropped this off. She moved to the other side of the counter and smiled at the beautiful design cake for his birthday, based on the three colours, yellow, green and purple. Do you like it? They wanted to do something for you, to say happy birthday? Adrian was stunned. That Marinette's parents would do this for him? Especially with his own father hadn't? Part of him celebrated the fact that he liked to think he was part of her family and into the future would become his too. I must thank them tomorrow. What do you think they were like? Flowers? A card? A food basket, he listed off all the thank you gifts he had memorised from Natalie. You can help make dinner with me tomorrow and it gives my mum a break. But surely a thoughtful gift says a lot more than a price tag can any day. That explains a lot, he thought to himself. That's why you are so thoughtful and caring. And one of the things I find lovable about you. Would you say I'm lovable enough for you to dance with? She held her hand out in front of him to take. Adrian took it and did a bow, ready to kiss her hand as she raised her eyebrows at him. It would be my pleasure, Marinette. He watched as her expression shifted and calculated for a minute before returning to a smile. Another tick he thought to himself, guiding her into the middle of the room, receiving surprised looks and whispers from some of their friends. Are you all right? She seemed bashful, darting her gaze from one couple to another. We don't have to dance if you're not comfortable yet. Then, as if Nino was reading his mind, the song began playing in the background, catching a smirk of his friend. A song? I mean... We have danced twice to it. I kind of class it as a song, but you might not. So she muffled into his shoulder as he encouraged her closer. I like to think of it as our song too. I have it on my playlist for when I found myself thinking of you. She leaned her head back and searched his eyes as he drowned in hers. Really? Adrian nodded his head. She reached a hand up and cupped his cheek as she kissed the other one. 
saying everything he wanted to hear in that moment. Part 5. Marinette's POV. Marinette had woken early. To be honest with herself, she hadn't really slept. She had kept waking, believing the day before had been a vivid dream that the day was rewinding on itself. But it had happened. They had spent the most wonderful day together. So amazing, she didn't know how she was going to top it with her second date. A film? A thought? And hot chocolates? How could that even compare? Tiki, tell me, how can I make this date amazing? Do I build a two-fear fort or one that takes over the room? Or what if I made him a special blanket that he could take home? Wait, haven't I made him one of those already? Marinette darted around the room, her hands flying around and almost hitting a Kwame several times. Marinette, calm down! Adrian is coming to spend time with you, not to be impressed by your fort building skills or more gifts you can give him, but you. But what if, what if I'm not enough? By myself, that is. What if I don't talk enough or too much? What if he rethinks about being with me? He woke up this morning and had second thoughts. She flapped out a fluffy blanket, laying it on top of a pile of pillows with Tiki giggling flying from underneath. <laughs> That's just silly, Marinette. Hadrian isn't like that. He wouldn't say he was in love with you lightly. Oh, you're right, Tiki. Of course you are. It's just, you know, when you have been dreaming about something happening for so long and when it finally does, it strangely doesn't seem real or not yet. She tied off a corner of the overhead blanket to the corner of a mezzanine as a phone buzzed on her desk. Adrian. Hey, my love. Looking forward to seeing you soon. And our second date. Need me to bring anything? Double kiss. Marinette giggled, and all the worries she had felt earlier floated out of her. Marinette. Morning, you. I'm setting up the fort at the moment, and the only thing is missing is you. Double kiss. She felt herself blush at her own words. Oh, my. How can she send such messages to Adrian? To Adrian? Who would have thought? They had shared a few messages last night, bidding goodnight again, but had crashed earlier because of the lack of sleep the night before. Adrian, can't wait to see you, to hold you, and see you very soon. Double kiss. A kiss. The image of the kiss she shared with him as they bid goodnight, standing in front of the bakery door as the car waited for Adrian to climb back in. It felt like they had lingered in the moment, making the embrace last in her mind and see them through to the following day. Marinette grinned as she raced down the stairs, bursting into song that had been playing inside her head. Now she understood why Disney princesses suddenly broke out into song after love-filled moments with their prince. She collected the snacks she had placed to one side for them earlier and some glasses to go with a jug of juice chilling in the fridge. Lastly, she collected the DVDs she had discussed last night and placed them next to the laptop. Adrian. Knock, knock. Double kiss. She bounded down the stairs, creating a thunderous sound, landing in front of the back door to the bakery. Who's there? Eh. She heard him muffle something, then followed by a cough. E your prince? Would that make me your princess? She opened the door and saw him blush, wiggle his eyebrows at her. Possible? I mean, possibly? He coughed again. Oh, she hoped he wasn't coming down with anything. He turned and waved at the car to leave, and then turned round to greet her. One went right, and the other left, ending kissing each other's cheek and Adrian rubbing the back of his neck. This was a great start. Breathe, it's just nerves. He is excited to be here, right? She guided him up the stairs, stretching out her hand behind her, and a surge of excitement rippled through her as his fingers locked onto hers. She shut the door behind them as he stood in the living room of the flat, alone. I have everything set up in my room, if you want to follow me. Suddenly feeling nervous, 
she hadn't been alone with Adrian in her room since the gaming tournament, and grateful she had time to tidy up properly instead of darting around the room with Tiki finding random things she had missed. He pulled her hand closer to him with a wide smile on his face. Hey, you. You look beautiful, by the way. He leaned in closer, reaching his other hand to her shoulder, guiding towards her neck. She let out a little chuckle, glancing down at the pink polka dot top and grey pleated skirt with the black tights and ankle boots as she mirrored his moves, his lips softly touching hers. I have wanted to do that for... He looked at his watch. About the last 14 hours. Now, what is it you wanted to show me? He remarked smoothly, his gaze landing on her rosy cheeks and smiling. I have everything ready for a cosy autumn hideaway, and it just happens to be raining outside, making it perfect. She glanced sideways, guiding him up the stairs, hoping he approves. I don't know about you, but being inside when it's raining makes me feel extra protected, and cuddle? In closer? He squeezed her hand. I know what you mean. His voice veered off as she pointed to the grand fort she had made with the overhanging canopy, glow in the dark stars and a mountain of fellows lining the bottom and creating the walls. Wow! Marinette, you should major in fort construction as this is epic. I mean, I was expecting a V-shape, you know what I mean, but this? Is it too much? It's too much, isn't it? I just thought as your first experience it should be special, but I have done too much. I can take it down. Don't you dare! He quickly wrapped an arm around her and pulled her in close. It's amazing. I love it. He glanced from the fort and landed on her eyes. I love you. Thank you for doing this. You're so kind and thoughtful. She felt her cheeks blush at his stare and open admiration for her. I love you too, and I'm pleased you like it. Come here. She pulled him further into the fort, where she had set up the laptop and their nest to snuggle in. She had placed loads of LED candles around the space for a warm glow and found the blanket she had made for him, but laid it out rather than present it as a gift. Tiki had been right about that one. Adrian was no longer this ideal, that she had to win him over by mountains of gifts. She had said it herself. It was the thought that counts. We have snacks and drinks and later we can make hot chocolates and we can even bake cookies if you like. She lowered herself down and patted to the spot beside her. So I was thinking you got mail for the film. It's one I used to watch with my mom. It's a tad old school, but I love it and I think it sounds good to me. I'm just happy to be here with you. And wow, being inside here? Can we just call this place home and never leave? Adrian lay back, grinning. Marinette placed on the film and then leaned into his outstretched arms, feeling his heart beating fast in his chest and increase in speed each time she shifted on the spot, telling her she wasn't alone at being nervous, no matter how he acted at being confident. I see what you mean of being old school, with the dial-up internet, imagine, makes you grateful for our phones and how fast it is now. He let out a warm chuckle, wow, already reminds me of when we were in New York, we danced? I'm sorry I had to leave, how much I wanted to stay and be with you, I wanted to tell you then. She leaned her head off his chest a fraction and stared up at him a hand sliding from his chest to his neck. I know what you mean. The difference between then and now and how flustered I had been. I wanted to be next to you, but my feelings for you. I thought then that you and Luca were. He glanced downwards towards the screen. But weren't you with Kagami? Let's just say, at that point, I was confused. All I knew was really, I wanted to spend my time with you. He laughed. <laughs> what a difference a year can make. I know in my heart and soul who I love. It's funny. For me, it's always been you. Even compared to other choices, it was you. 
She leaned up and kissed him on the cheek before he turned his head and gently kissed her lips. It is funny how they are talking to one another and not knowing who the other person is. How they are passing each other on the street and not know it's them. Could you imagine something like that? remarked Adrian, keeping his focus on the screen and not at Marinette, who was glancing up at him. The only thing that comes to mind would be Cat Noir and Ladybug. I mean, they don't know who each other is, do they? But it makes you think, if really they do, but don't really know it? Like they have been friends or underneath the noses all this time? Adrian ran his hand down her back as she wrapped hers around his waist. Do you really think so? Don't you think if they spend that much time together, they would see the signs? I think it's hard to tell, really. I mean, these two. I think they have a feeling that it could be this person, but how do they know? Does one of them say something and see, or do they keep it to themselves and hope the other person figures it out? Yeah, but for these characters, what's at stake is the business, the hearts. But if you use Ladybug and Cat as an example, the stakes are bigger. Nothing is bigger than your heart. He used a soft tone, his fingers causing the skin on her arm to create goosebumps as it tickles up and down. For Ladybug, she has the entire world on her shoulders. I mean, I would guess. She lowered her voice. Was he? No, he can't be. How would he? But what's the point of saving the world? If there's no love? I mean, now that I know what it truly feels like, I couldn't imagine being without it. He pulled her in closer against him and sighed. She paused for a moment contemplating his words and making shapes across his t-shirt as she ran her fingers across his chest. I think she wants it to be him, but I think she's scared to admit it and the consequences it could have on her business, I mean. Marinette quickly gestured to the screen. Oh, look, he's figured it out. He knows. Do you think he will tell her or keep it to himself? There was a lightness to his voice. A burst of butterflies surged inside of her. It wasn't this simple, was it? Were they really still talking about the film or was he implying? I think he knows. It's not that simple and... Wait for the right time? Wait for when she is ready to know or admit it? To herself? Yeah, I can see how that would be the best way forward. But now he knows. She dared to gaze up at him and saw a twinkle in his eyes that confirmed something inside of her. You can't always act on impulse. But I think it's clever. How he is giving her small hints along the way. Warming her up to the idea. I think saying it out loud might be a little too scary to hear straight away. After a few minutes had passed, do you have another blanket? He glanced around the room and pointed towards one folded in the side. Would you mind? She reached over and grabbed it. It had been the one she had knitted for him. Oh, I love it. It's so soft. He wrapped it around them both. Perfect. You are snug as a bug in a little rug. Something my mum used to say. That's funny. I was going to say, you look as cosy as a pussycat, she remarked casually. It is funny you should say that, as there is a trick I can do. He nuzzled his head against hers and purred. Wow, you really are my kitty, aren't you? And you are my princess, my lady, and my love. I love the fact we have time to figure it out and what it means. There's no rush. After all, it's just me and you against the world and nothing means more to me than my love for you, my kitty. They wrapped their arms around each other, knowing nothing could part them now.
Thank you for listening to season one of A Birthday Surprise. Make sure you look out for season two and make sure you smash that like button, comment down below what you think of it and make sure you subscribe so you do not miss out on other treats and one shots and series to come. And I hope you are good and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.